Okay, so we're going to go over the process that I do when I'm trying to model a handheld enclosure for a particular lock profile. Um, the average enclosure I make is just something that's handheld and the lock cylinder fits within the enclosure centered, uh, flush with the top in some form or fashion. And uh, so we're going to do an SFIC cylinder and it's going to require the use of a control key to lock the cylinder in the enclosure. It's a fairly popular model I sell. So uh, some of the measurements we're going to need is we're going to need the diameter of this circle, which is also the same diameter as the bottom circle. We're going to need the measurement of the bottom of the cylinder here uh, to the center of the control lug so we can model a cavity to accommodate any garbage that's protruding out of the back of the lock here. And we're going to measure from the back of this little collar here to the back of the cylinder. I'm going to use this diameter difference here between the housing and the face to prevent the cylinder from just falling through. That's, that lip is going to rest on the top of the enclosure. So we're also going to need the diameter of this collar here. So we have this diameter, we have that distance, we have that distance, and we're going to measure the length of the control lug. We're going to measure the width of the control lug. And we're going to take note that the control lug begins at the back of the cylinder. And let's see here, I think that is all the measurements we're going to take. And through the powers of the internet, I have already taken these measurements with a caliper. So the housing diameter is 13.25 millimeters from here to here. The face diameter is 14.12 millimeters, so that's you know, from here to here. The body length is 27.4, so that's from the back of this collar to the back of here. The bottom plug clearance is 13.5, so from the bottom of the cylinder to somewhere in here. To leave clearance for any of this stuff. Uh, the control lug is 17 millimeters long and the control lug width is two and a half millimeters wide. And uh, those are all the measurements we need. And anyone who is familiar with 3D printing knows that uh, you can model this and when you print it, it's not going to fit. Uh, your, your printer itself is going to have minor inaccuracies, it's going to cause over extrusion. Uh, then you have variances in the filament diameter that's going to cause over extrusion and under extrusion and what you typically have to do is model something and then add tolerances to accommodate for the process of 3D printing because it's not an exact science. You know, if I was CNCing an enclosure for the housing diameter, I'd probably do 13.3 millimeters or something. That would be a tight fit, uh, but it would be 13.3 millimeters in diameter. Uh, I just happen to know from my printer, I over extrude a little bit, so I'm probably going to make the diameter 13.45 maybe uh, millimeters in diameter because that will accommodate for over extrusion on both sides of a circle. Over extrudes by about 0.1 millimeter. Um, and we're just going to do that for an initial test. So typically, what I'll do is all the different ge geometrical features of an enclosure when the model is created and I have an initial guess for the tolerances needed to accommodate for the printing process, I will print slices. So for example, I'll print like a one or two millimeter thick slice of the figure eight shape, and that's uh, going to test how well the cylinder would fit down into the enclosure from the get-go. And uh, I will keep expanding or uh, the diameter or separating, you know, how far apart these two circles are, which by the way, that's another measurement we need is the distance between this top of the cylinder and the bottom of that circle. They'll let me know how far apart the circles are. But anyway, um, once I get it fitting over this figure eight shape, very snug, um, I'm going to slide it past the control lug, put the control lug back out, and that will tell me how well it fits around the control lug and how good of a job the cavity for the control lug is going to do at you know, holding the cylinder in the enclosure. Uh, another test slice would be a thin piece that mimics the top of the enclosure up here so this lip has something to ride against and it's going to test the model geometry for the location and the size of the control lug cavity to make sure it's you know not too far 
you know too close to the, the the top of the closure or make sure that it's wide enough and make sure that it's long enough and you know things like that um let's see here well, another another slice would be uh testing the a clearance of a cavity to accommodate all this junk hanging off the back of the the plug here and i believe that's probably all the slices i would do test prints of and then once all the test slices individually work together well with the cylinder at that point it would be safe to do a full size print uh, in some good quality filament and you can have a full size on paper it should work in closure so um, this is going to require some mild CAD experience now I'm going to be using Fusion 360 it's free and in my opinion it's fairly easy to grasp and you know pick up fairly quickly I'm going to be assuming you have some working knowledge of the application already so I'm not going to go too low level or too basic in what I'm doing but uh, I think once you see me uh, modeling this, it's going to be fairly easy to pick up. And uh, so let's hop over to the CAD program and get started. Okay, so now we're in Fusion 360, so let's go ahead and get started on a sketch. And the first thing I'm going to do is put an oval in here, and this will be the external uh, interface for the hand. So I'm going to make that... 50 millimeters, actually, uh, yeah, and I'm going to make that one 40, and this is just an arbitrary shape, and uh, see here, we know we're going to need a couple of circles vertically aligned with one another, we know that that circle is 13.25 millimeters in diameter, we know that this one is the same, and one measurement I did not get on camera was the distance between the top of this circle and the bottom of that circle. So we're going to uh, put that measurement in there. I got that off camera. It happens to be 24 millimeters. So now we have the outer shape of the enclosure. We have the holes for the cylinder, or the uh, alpha version of the holes for the cutout, but they're not locked in space yet. We have to center these two holes within the enclosure. So what I'm going to do is remove that constraint and re-add it using different points of reference. So now we have the centers of the circles precisely spaced apart. So now we're going to make another constraint, the distance between that center and that center, which is going to be that measurement divided by 2. So now everything is locked in space. So we're going to do an extrusion of that say, I don't know, 50 millimeters. Sounds good. And as you can see, we have a rough idea of what the enclosure is going to look like. So now we have to model a cavity for the control lug. So we're going to create another sketch. We're going to create it on that plane. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a reference line. Uh, they call it a construction line. And it's just going to reference the vertical center of the enclosure. So we know we're going to need just a, a rectangle. We know that the uh, we know that the rectangle is we measured the lug to be two and a half millimeters. So I'm going to say uh, 2.7 millimeters wide. And we know that the control lug was 17 millimeters long. So we're going to do 18. And uh, that'll give one millimeter on one side, and we'll see where I got that number later. So we know that the bottom of the control lug was flush with the back of the cylinder. And the back of the cylinder was, according to this sheet of paper, was 27.4 millimeters from the back of the face of the plug, which in this instance is going to be the top here. So we're going to make another construction line. The, diff the distance between that construction line and the top was 
We'll just round that up to 0.5. All right. And now we know that we're going to give the bottom of the uh, control lug cavity, we're going to give that about a half a millimeter lower than the bottom of the cylinder. And it's going to be 18 millimeters tall, which gives it a half a millimeter above the lug. And just to be nice, we'll give it a full millimeter above. Okay, so now we have that. Is there anything that's not locked in? Okay, yeah, yeah, we gotta center the cavity. All right, so we know that it is this measurement wide. So we're gonna make a constraint from one edge to this construction line, and it's gonna be the width divided by two. So now it's centered, it's locked in place. Let's stop the sketch. And at this point, we're about to make a left and right side of the enclosure. All right, so know that uh, four millimeters. Okay, so we know that the top of the, or the outermost part of the control lug is flush with the imaginary tangent line between these two circles. So we can extend it out to, it's a little further than it needs to be, but that's okay. It's okay. So, uh, just how far off is that? That's, yeah, good enough. Okay, so now we have, you can kind of see it in there, a cavity for the control lug. And it should be spaced properly. And just kind of eyeballing the enclosure and eyeballing the cylinder sitting next to me on the desk, it looks pretty good. So um, let's talk about test slices. So the first slice I'm gonna make is gonna be, if you're looking at it from this view, I'm gonna make a slice from the top about one and a half, two millimeters thick. And that's going to test the fitment of the cylinder in this hole. I'm gonna create another slice uh, that's going to have a box that's roughly from this point to that point, and probably as far back as here. So it's gonna be a square See if I can, uh, it's going to be something, something like that. And that's going to test the fit of the control lug in the cavity. And it's going to test the location of the cavity compared to where it needs to be. And um, that's probably, you know what, uh, probably one more thing I'm going to do is uh, just to make this more 3D printer friendly, I might play with, putting a chamfer on that back edge. All right, so that's a two millimeter, so we'll just do a, a one millimeter chamfer. And anyone who's been in 3D printing probably knows exactly why I did that for overhang purposes. So anyway, so let's do some test prints and I will come back with the slices to see how they fit. And just to make sure, you know what? I never did the tolerance here. Uh, to, counteract your different tolerances and manufacturing capabilities of a 3D printer. 13.25 was the exact diameter of the cylinder. This is not a CNC machine. So I'm gonna guess like, yeah, I don't know, 13.6 in diameter. And we'll see what that does. And uh, we'll be back. Well, all right, after some trial and error back and forth between printing test slices and going through the CAD program to make minor adjustments, we have our finished enclosure. So you can see the geometry we are working on. You can see the control lug cavity. And uh, we have a few SFIC cylinders to try out. Here is a, uh, here's a key mark, SFIC. As you can see, it fits in there fairly snug. And we have this best SFIC. And as you can see, it holds the cylinder snugly. Good enough for picking. And I hope you learned something, and look forward to making the next one of these. Peace out.